Hi, my name's Courtney. Uh, make sure you watch my interview on LCDC TV. Yeah, and I hope you enjoy every bit of it. Hello and welcome again to LCDC TV. As you know, the whole aim of this channel is to talk to people involved in the cab trade, manufacturers, trade halls, and, and real celebrities in the cab trade who have big opinions. And uh, me saying that, there's no one I know who's got opinions and is well respected within this trade as Courtney. Thank you, Courtney, for coming in. You're welcome. Lovely right? to see you again. Um, you may have seen Courtney in, in traffic. He drives the white LEVC TXE. You might have seen him go past hey, there, there, there. and you go. And, and you think maybe he'd be a lucky fellow to have a cup of tea in the chat with. And he is. Uh, and that's why I've got him in today. So, Courtney, I'd love you to start. If you could tell all, all our viewers. What made you become a cab driver and, and a bit of your history in the cab okay. trade? Well, first of all, good evening, good afternoon to everyone. Um, what made me start in the trade? Well, I used to run around a lot, not caring much about anything. A group of us, you know, we lived a free life. Reggae song systems, if you know what that is, just that's quite a nice way of living, actually. Living our think. life, you know. Um, I remember where we, we were used to hang out, um, a housing estate in Battersea. There was an old cab driver there, actually, an old boy by the name of Alf. Never forget him. And he would pass by in his cab at the time, he'd shout out, You know, why don't you lot find something to bloody well do? You know, we'd always have a boy at him, man. Yeah, yeah and one day I just saw him and I said to him, how do I get to do what you do? And he said to me, do you really want to do this? And I said, yeah. And he told me, he says, but if you ever, ever give up, he said, don't talk to me again. And I remember applying and I got refused. Okay, and I got refused because I had a conviction for marijuana. And they gave me the option to appeal. But I had to appeal to Scotland Yard. Oh. I appealed it. I had an interview at Scotland Yard. I remember, I think it was the assistant commissioner. He asked me a question. He said, why should we let you drive a black cab? And I thought I would be light-hearted and make fun of it. And I said to him, well, the cab is black and I am black. And he threw me out of the room. <laughs> yeah, he threw me out. He said, get out. Oh, Courtney, what have you done? And I'm sitting up there and I'm thinking, oh, no. What have I done? Yeah, and he called me back in and he says to me, if you ever want... This lifestyle you talk about, young man, he says, comments like that will get you nowhere. Now, I thought I was being funny. He did not see the funny side. Yeah, 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 yeah. Okay? And he said to me, if you are ever caught in the wrong place at the wrong time, you will have no license. Do you understand me, Mr. Connell? I said, yes, sir. He said, if you are ever caught walking with the wrong person, you will have no license. Do you understand me, Mr. Connell? I said, yes, sir. He goes, good. I will be recommending you to proceed on the knowledge. Sure, and that's how I started. But then it was three years of hell. Well, when I say hell, I don't mean in a bad way. It was, it was a kind of discipline I didn't understand at first. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because unless you've done the knowledge, yeah. there's nothing like the knowledge no. ever, is there? But as the years went on, you get to realize they're doing this for a reason. The wind-ups. Yeah, and I can remember when I went for the first appearance, you know, the exam, he's Scottish. And he saw me and he went, bloody hell. He went, what are you meant to be then? He says, are you meant to be a Rastafari? And I said, yes, sir. He went, you look disgusted. I went, yes, sir. 
trying mm. to provoke you. Yeah, 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 yeah. He was going to sit down there. And he asked me a question, and before I could get the first word out, it was, you don't have to talk about a shite. Where do you get some shite from? And I'm sitting there, I'm thinking, what the... Mm. And in the end, he says to me, get out of my office. Okay, I left, this went on. Another time I went, my appearance was meant to be half nine in the morning. I went three o'clock in the afternoon, I was still sitting in the waiting room. <laughs> no. Yo, yeah, oh yes. And I remember two that I got up to go and ask, you know, what's happening? And I remember the examiner saying, is there a problem, Mr. Connor? That's when I realized. It was the guy. They left me there on purpose. Yeah. So I said, no, sir, but could I borrow a pen? I just want to write a number. I didn't really. I just, I just have to think of something. Yeah. I went back in the room, sat there, and then the examiner came and says, are you still there? I said, I'm afraid so, sir. He says, right, come with me. He took me in that room. He asked me one question. I said, that's your lot for today. And I left. Okay. And next time I go, this was two days after PC Dunn got killed in Clapham. I walked in and the examiner said, nasty business that copper being shot, wasn't it? I said, yes, sir. Very bad business indeed, sir. And it's cast a black shirt over us all, sir. He said, oh, well, that's the way it works. So I kept quiet, because I realized what was happening. But skipping that and getting to the end, I noticed you got a picture on the wall up here. That picture, which, yeah, you can't, cast, yeah, you can't see yard. it, watching. Yeah. But that is the last day of yeah. taxis mm. being passed at the yard. Okay, well, if any driver out there who knows how the PCO yard was, back then, with all the cabs in it. The last thing that was done to me at the carriage office, I was taken to the top floor of that building. And look at I made to look down in the yard and read three license plates from the cab. And I believe I'm the only person on the knowledge that's ever happened to. In the back of the day. Okay. And when I finish, the examiner says, good, now I'll book your driving test. Okay. I mean, Courtney, <laughs> The stories you just yeah. highlight in there, yeah. it's not good really, but I'm saying part of the knowledge yeah. was one, to, for you to learn the roads, yeah. and two, about your character. And discipline. Because he was saying, mm. I guess, when they were saying them things for you, mm. they was wanting you to explode. Yeah. But you, you say it might not be good, but when you check it out in the end, the public do worse. Mm. Okay? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, in a way, they were preparing me for what you could for what face. You would face, and you face worse. Yeah, yeah, you do face a lot worse. Okay. Yeah. So people see you sometimes, they see a color. This, I remember the examiner saying to me, you know you're going to have problems out there. And it wasn't until I started driving that I realized what he meant. What he said, oh, it's true what he said. You know what I mean? Yeah. When some people would see you, and as they see you coming, they put their hand in. I wait for a cab and a white driver to come by. I went through this, yeah, for a long time. And you would think, oh man, you know, you, but you couldn't yeah. go out there and start, otherwise I wouldn't have a badge now, you know? And... But the interesting thing for me, Courtney, as we move on, is that yeah. all this sort of negativity that you've yeah. faced, mm -hmm. you've overcome it to yeah. the extent that you actually went back into the system yeah, and, and become a knowledge examiner yourself. Throughout this whole time, I've never once cut the dreadlocks from my head, which is still here under my hat today. You can always take your hat off and do the old oh, Bob Harley no, shape. No, 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 it might frighten them. <laughs> <laughs> no, but seriously, I I, um, I went back to the school where I did the knowledge with a, a great guy, actually, Mr. Alex Elden. Is that a Clapham? Yeah, Clapham, South London Green by School. You know, he came out of the Royal Air Force, came from Jamaica, you know, and he was part of the West Indian ex servicemen. Okay, night there at that yeah, school. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. And he started at, he had that school. I learned everything there. And he was the one that said to me, You could be big in this trade one day, he said. And what happened was, 
if I remember correctly, I actually applied for the carriage office, but it was still under the Met. Well, Payton Street. Yeah, yeah, but it was called the Metropolitan Police. And they said to me, I would have to hand my badge in to become an examiner, which I was not prepared to do. No, no, no. So I waited. Um, and then when I think when Tony Blair became Prime Minister and he brought back the mayor into London. Transport for London. Yeah, Transport for London came about. Everything went under Transport for London. So the opportunity came now when the mayor said he, he now wanted the examiners to be car drivers. So you had to have a badge to and become what, an examiner. And what made you call me as a driver, you mm. that working, earning mm. money, you had the freedom, the flexibility yeah. that we all love about mm. this job, yeah? What made you think, you know what, I'm going to go back into there? What was the reason? Right. Are you interested in promoting the knowledge? Well, not only promoting the knowledge, but helping. I, I realised one thing. I don't know if your camera can see it. I have scars on my hand here. These scars I got from the kind of life I lived. And then what no one else to go through? 1992. I watched a friend of mine with four bullet holes in him. Okay. That's from the age of 16 years old. Mm. Knife, death, the whole lot. Right through till I was 35. I had started the knowledge when he died. Yeah. And that was the day I thought, you know what, I'm done with this. Sorry about that. But did yeah. you find, Courtney, that when, to be, when he was a cab driver, yeah. can you honestly, did it give you a better life? Of course it did. Of course, yeah. yeah. Of course it did. Because... It, no regrets. You see, no. You see, after going through all of that, the, the growing up with the violence and the, all this stuff, and I realised, you know what? I could do something here. Yeah. And then when Mr. Eldon pushed me to apply for the um, exam. Yeah, yeah. That time, Ken Livingston had become here. I applied, but as I don't know if you remember, at that time he started straight away attacking the cab trade. Uh, what was that, the white working Yeah, when he called it a white mafia and... But even though anyone could yeah. apply at the but time, yes, anyone could still apply. can. Yeah. yeah, so I remember writing an article about what he said, and I had a paper at the time called the Taxi Times. That's right. And they printed it. Was you an examiner at the time? No, no, I was just still helping out at the South school. London yeah, Greenback yeah. School. But they printed the article, but I had applied for the exam and I never heard nothing about it. So I called them one day and I said, um, you know, I'm just inquiring about it. And he says, oh, you've been very popular in the taxi papers. <laughs> yeah, but, so they're now talking about the article. Yeah, they know, they know, don't they? So, I said, yeah, but what about my side? They said, well, we can't go into that. So I said to them, well, I'll take it further. So it was actually a chap called Tom Scullion, who was with a group called Halls at the airport at the time, yeah, yeah. who sent me to a lawyer in Islington. I think they were called Guyton and Cole, I think. And when they heard what happened, they wrote a letter saying that I have grounds to sue TFL. Did I let you become an examiner then? Well, before that... Before than that? I went to Windsor House. Okay. I'm not going to call the lady's name, but I saw a lady there, and she asked me if they look at changing the complaints procedure, would I relinquish the court case? Wow. So I said to her, well, if, I, if it will help all cab drivers, yes. And I tore up the letter. A few days later, I get a phone call. Oh, Mr. Connell, we are wondering if you're still interested in the interview. <laughs> so I said, yes. Yeah. So I went for the interview. I go in for the interview. There's two examiners on the panel, plus the lady doing it. And I don't remember all of this till the day I die. The lady says to me, how do you feel about equal opportunities? So I says to her, well, can I be frank? She goes, please do. I says, well, 
I don't care if the person is black, white, pink, or blue with polka dot spots. As long as the person with the best criteria is supposed to get the job. And if you want to give me the job because of my color, you can stick it. Those are my exact words to her. And again, it happened. Could you leave the room, please? I was put there outside. Okay. You can't get in front of me. <laughs> yeah, I was put there. <laughs> so I remember the example of coming over and saying, Courtney, what have you done? You've blown it. I says, look, she asked me a question. You know it. She I, so. I answered it. Good. With that, the lady is coming out. I says, Mr. Connor, um, I don't normally do this, she says. But everybody is coming here and told us what they think we want to hear. But you said it as it was. Well done. A couple of days later, the phone rings again. Oh, Mr. Connell, we just like to tell you before you get the letter, you've got the job. Perfect. When can you start? Oh, I says, well, I'll tell you what, I've got to go to Barbados. I'll call you when I come back. But I didn't call him for nearly a month. So when I did phone him, oh, we're just, we're worried you didn't want the job again. He really had them panicking. Yeah, all of this time, I didn't realize this was building up to something. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I remember starting the job on the 4th of October, 2001. Me and another examiner, ex um, motorbike police, yeah, me and him started together. All right. I remember spending a week, I think, being shown what to do, everything. Within the second week, a call comes. They want to speak to me. Okay. I go to the phone, the person says, Oh, how are you settling in? I said, I'm doing fine. Um, we like you to come and take some pictures with the mirror. So I said, what for? Now the person says, what do you mean what for? You can live in somewhere talking. Yes, about yes. This, yeah. What do you mean what for? You gotta remember how you got the job. I said, well, how did I get the job? I thought I got here on merit. I didn't know you had anything to do with it. Then the person, and as I said, Grant, I will remember every bit of this you have till the day I Okay. It's a because man. it is what has made me deal with them the way I have done yeah. until this day. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. So I said to him, he says to me, well, you can't tell us that they treat you with any respect in there. I says, well, what are you saying? He says, you can't tell me that everything is hunky-dory in there with them. Who's that? He's talking about the other examiners. Okay. Because I was the only black one in there. Oh. So yeah. I said, are you telling me they're racist? Is that what you're saying? He didn't answer. And were they racist? Did okay. you have any trouble with no, I still, examiners? I still meet with them to this day. Okay. Doesn't mean my colleagues ever sense to this very day. Yeah. The only thing that stopped us from having yearly meals is the COVID. Yeah, oh wow. Okay, yeah. all right. So when he said that now, I asked the question, I said, are you telling me you're racist? Is that what you're saying? No, he doesn't answer. So then he says, what about these pictures? I said, well, if I come and take these pictures, are my white colleagues going to be in the pictures? I said, no, we don't want them. We just want you. So I said, well, you know what? If you don't want them, you don't want me. I find it absolutely fascinating, Courtney. <laughs> so that let's tell you this bit. The you person, you know, they say, hey, you're such yeah, a strong the person, man. The person then said to me after that, he says, oh, you've started taking a bit white since you got the job, haven't you? No. Oh. Now, I broke down in tears here and then. So the examiner who was sitting in the office and saw this realized something is wrong. Yeah. So he took me at the time to see Roy Ellis. The head of the the head of the yes, yeah. He asked me what do I want to do? I said, tell them to leave me alone. Just want to get on with your job? Yeah. As an example. And if anybody is thinking I can't prove this, I have those letters to this day, mm. which I have kept throughout the years. Okay. So starting the job now and being there, I was seeing certain things which I'm thinking, no, this is not right. Yeah, this should be happening. 
So I used to write them letters and begging them. Yeah? I remember writing one, begging them to stop with this ethnic minority thing. You know what I'm saying? Look, you're making people think we haven't got a brain to take for ourselves. But with that company, because at the mm. time, I know that is some Ken Lewis has yeah. said, he didn't view there was enough, uh, what should we say, time? Should well, we no, have? no. If we can, we ain't using that word. I hate those words. Those words are sponsored The, the world we live in now, you, everyone's got to be so politically no, correct. No, you know what? What can I say, Courtney? Tell me what you want. Just say black or Asian. Okay, okay. Black or Asian. Right. Forget this. Okay. Um, so, or whatever they want to call it. When Livingston said there wasn't enough black yeah. or Asian cab drivers, at the time, was you aware of any barriers stopping ethnic minorities? No, all right. I'll use my friends, my close friends, as an example. When I started the knowledge, I used to say to some of them, oh, come and do this. Yeah? Well, I can't be bothered with that, you know. I got other things to do. Whatever. They were not interested. Yeah. It does take a lot of hard work to be a okay. cab driver and doing another Each job. and every person had their own choice to do it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But because a lot of black and Asian people were coming forward, the wider public did not know anything about the knowledge because the knowledge is not something you advertise in a job center. No. It's, okay. like it's a word of a mouth. Yeah, yeah, like you were right. about. Yeah. Right. Yeah, it's word of a mouth. It was me that took interest. When mm -hmm. I saw that old white cab driver in his cab, I, yes, times I made a choice to go to him and ask yeah, yeah, him yeah. how I do that. My friends didn't. Oh. They chose their own path. Yeah? So for the mayor at the time, to make this into a racial thing wasn't nice. It was not right. Wasn't nice. No, because the door was open and still is open to anybody. All you gotta do is up the courage and go. Yeah, yeah. You know, when I had the knowledge school, if you came to me and said you want to do the knowledge, I would ask you a question. And depending on how you answer it, would determine if I talk to you the knowledge or not. So I would ask you, do you want to try it or do you want to do it? And if you said you want to try it, there is a door. Yes. Yeah. Because you cannot try the knowledge. You either want to do it or you don't. Yeah? So you're a knowledge examiner. Yeah. Right? You're a knowledge examiner. Mm. Um, regarding the knowledge, do you think that the knowledge is fit for purpose? Because over the years, of course it is. there's been arguments and we just need a sat yeah. like man, Uber. Okay. Why do we need a black right. man driving? Right. 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 Here's my take on it. The knowledge is the backbone of the cab trade. But they probably don't want a cab trade in London. Well, that's their problem. Yeah, it doesn't you know they, they can't just finish it like that? Remember, the black cab is part of the hackney carriage, which is regulated by laws laid down by parliament. And if I'm correct, only parliament can do that. Okay, do you sometimes feel TFL will just make it so? hard mm -hmm. for the cab trade to expand and grow yes. and, and be in a healthy situation. Yes, because they've got this... I don't Why know... Why do they hate us, Courtney? Look. Why? All right, when I was examining, for instance, you would hear people walking about the building saying, oh, cab drivers got it easy, cab drivers are this, this. You see, for instance, <sighs> while I was examining, the problem the management had is that none of the management has ever done the knowledge. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So they could not do the job I did. A cab driver can do the job I was doing. The management of TFL cannot because they've never took the time to even learn one run to see how this thing is done, okay? So they had a problem. So for instance, the examiners, we all dressed in suit and ties. Mm -hmm. Sometimes TFL would have what they call dress down days. So the staff would dress like you are. The only people that will not do it was the examiners. We stayed in our own little cocoon. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because you had an issue, I believe, when you was an examiner. Yeah. 
with someone wearing a tie. Okay. Is that, was, is that right. true or not? It is true. I'll tell that you this one. You know, at the time you had what is called, um, you had to come for a, a talk at the beginning. So when you applied for the knowledge, you was brought to the carriage office and you were told what was expected of you. So you were explained how to go about doing the runs, yeah, yeah how to carry yourself, carry yourself how you should dress. Yeah. So from the moment you accept on the knowledge, when you come for that talk, that introductory talk, you had to come in a suit and tie. You couldn't come to the casually dressed like I am now. Oh, me. Yeah. Or you, you couldn't do it. It's like that. They tell you leave. That's right. This was the start of the discipline. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. So you came, so one day- You had to come prepared. Yeah. Exactly. So it was my turn to do this introductory talk that day. So I always used to go early, stand by the reception, and just watch people coming in. I didn't get involved at Stand time. by, have yeah. a look. So they had no idea who I was. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Okay. But the staff- No, maybe. Okay, yeah. And you know, the lady, and I'm a man, I believe in speaking about race because if you don't do this, this is why we end up with half the problems we have. The lady sitting behind the counter, a white lady, now she's trying, this guy comes in, black guy, he's smart, but he didn't have a no tie. No time, yeah. Now she's trying to explain to him in the best possible way. Where's your time? that he don't start thinking he's being discriminated against. She's trying to tell him in the best way why he's not allowed it. So I'm sitting standing there watching this. And he keeps saying to her, not understand, not understand. And I'm thinking, well, if you can't understand what she's telling you, how are you going to do knowledge? But then he took a letter that he was sent. And he says to her, it doesn't say must. Oh, now I know he's uh, back in the system. Being tricky. Yeah. So that's when I stepped in. And I said to him, right, I'm the examiner here. I'm the one doing the talk. Ooh. And what this lady has just told you is correct. I bet that shocked him. Yeah, I said, you're not wearing a tie. You're not properly dressed. Therefore, you're not allowed in. Now, bear in mind, again, I am not mentioning anyone's names here. Please don't. Right. I don't, I don't There's a gentleman standing by the lift. TFL employee. A TFL employee. Yeah, yeah. He can hear everything I'm saying to this guy. And you're not being rude? No. You're not being swearing? So, you're not, no. Nothing. I says to the guy, but we, I says, you're early. I says, we've still got another 15 minutes. I goes, I'll give you the benefit of that. I says, there's a market across the road. I said, you go on by the tie. Put it on and come back, and I'll allow you in. Fair enough. Now, the gentleman who stood at the lift and heard this, for a whole week he passed me, all right, Courtney. I said, yeah, fine, you? Yeah, I'm all right, mate, you know what I mean? The following week, I get called into an office. Okay. Um, you stopped someone from going into an introductory talk. I said, yes. Um, and he was a bit, um, I says, pardon me, I says, look, I says, I'm trying to maintain the standards here. Yeah, yeah, yeah. If that's not what you all want. Let me know. Please. And I says, I mean, you shouldn't be working here. And I actually even said to him, and if you don't like what I'm doing, sack me. Because I threatened to resign at that time and my line manager said, court, we don't do that. Yeah. After that happened, TFL changed the wording in their letters now. It now says you must come smartly dressed. Not wear it. Not wear color, not say color and tie now. Mm. Okay? Then another time I'm doing another introductory talk, a guy came who happens to be a Muslim, and he had on his arm, um, now I don't want to be disrespectful here, he had on his um whatever they call the long robes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He had on one of those. Because TFL had now changed the way you the came. He should have really come in a collar and tie. But they now changed the criteria. So he's smart. Right. So after the introductory talk, he comes to me and he says to me, 
would he be allowed to come to the appearances dressed like he was? So I said, well, no, you'll have to wear a suit and tie. He said, yeah, but <clears throat> this is my cultural dress. So I said, stop. I said, did anybody come to your house and force you to do the knowledge? He said, no, sir. Good point, Tony, good point. I was, you came here of your own accord, didn't you? He says, yes, sir. I was, so why do you want to come about the system? What did he say? Yeah? I said to him, wearing a suit and tie for 15 minutes is not going to harm you or your religion. He never brought that up again. And what, did you ever see him? Did oh, yeah, yeah, him? He, yeah, he came in a suit and tie. Yes, he never done that again. Just yeah. about the slug you said, it was the standards that you yes, believed. Yes, I was seeing this. I was seeing this over and over again. Another incident, I walk outside one day because you had people applying for the private hire there as well. That's right. So I've gone outside one day, there's a car outside, and many of you may see the private hire vehicles with these round discs in the windows. The randals, yeah. the green ones. Yes, the green ones. yes. So years ago, somebody would remove the round part and just leave the diamond. Now that made your car unfit That's right. as a private hire vehicle. There was one outside, that way. So I remember, again, I'm not going to call the person's name, but management, he came out. So I said, I'm looking at this car. I said to him, now, that's a disgrace. He goes, what? I says that this car should be parked him outside here like that. And this person is inside doing their business. So he goes to me there, but it's a common form of abuse in it. And he walks off the chapel market. So I went inside. I got one of the girls from the private hire to come outside with a camera. And I got one of these CEOs, because at that time they tested the cab still at the carriage. Yeah, they sit down in the management. Yeah. And I got one to come out with me, and we took pictures in the car. I went back inside, went on the private hire floor, and I asked whose car was it outside? The person put their hand up. I says to him, why isn't this missing from your car? He said, his children took it off. So I said to him, listen, don't call a con artist. <laughs> that, yeah, that's going yeah. to be your life, yeah. Yeah. Okay. Left it. Couple of hours later, the line manager calls me and said, listen, this said person I saw outside, wants to see you in his office. I go to his office. He says, in future, you let the appropriate people do their job. You shouldn't be making a sound dance about it. So I says to him, as long as I work here, anything illegal I see happening, I don't care what department is in. report it. I'll do something about it. And if you don't feel that way, then maybe you shouldn't be working here. Um, and it never went any further. I mean, you're raising these issues about TFL people turning, on turn, years ago. turning a blind eye to everything since 10 years. Oh, yes. Oh, yes. Uh, oh, yes. Oh, like yes. I was speaking with Danny O'Regan, and we've been yeah. highlighting about the corruption within the government mm. and, and all the lobbying, allowing Uber to operate unlawfully. I mean, the state of the trade, Courtney, from the time we've been driving cabs mm. a long time, we're, we're like in the old boy club now. Yeah. But the, the, we seem to be traumatised, Courtney. We, there's been no good news for the cab trade the last decade. And as a cab driver, yeah. I don't know how you feel, I feel we're continually attacked and beaten. Yeah, yeah, of course. What's your views of the trade, Courtney? Look, the way I see it, we have the greatest cab service in the world. And as much as what's been going on, it still is. The London Black Cab is the best advert you can have for multiculturalism, okay, in this country and around the world. Why do you say that? All right. We have drivers from Iraq, Iran, Turkey, Ireland. We even have New Zealanders, okay? 
We have black West Indians, black British, black Africans. We have white English, we have Jewish who originally started it all. We have drivers who speak four and five languages. It's open to everyone. Of course. Everyone who's done now, it. what other country are you going to find a cab driver who may speak Arabic, or he may speak Swahili, or he may speak French, or he may speak... These are not London cab drivers. But do you feel, Courtney, I've had it loads of times, you get someone in the back of the cab mm. from, say, America, and, and after 10 minutes, they always sort of say something like, I wish we had a cab service like you where I live. Exactly, you see. Regulated, right. okay. safe. Right, but another thing like this is, look, all right, a classic example. Now, even though I was born in England, I grew up in the West Indies, Barbados to be exact. But I never really went to the beach. It didn't interest me. But if you went to Barbados, I'll be on the beach every you day. You'll be on the beach every day. It means something to you. It didn't mean anything to me. The same as in London now. What a lot of people um, turn a blind eye to or treat as trivial, people from other countries see it as a big thing. Do you think, Courtney? And we should embrace it. Yeah. What you're yeah. saying to me, do you feel, I feel like this, right? That Londoners, they, you speak to all the, all the youngsters who think mm. Uber's great, yeah? yeah? Uber's the new thing. Yeah. Let's all jump on an Uber. Mm. Black cabs are a thing of the past, right? Yeah. A lot of this. Do you think, though, if we ever go, mm -hmm. and they're not getting us back, it'll be the biggest regret they'll never have. And they'll be thinking, why did yeah. we let well, the cab trade disappear as a, from our streets? As I, said, as I said, I grew up in the West Indies. We have certain parables and sayings, and one of them is, a new room sweeps clean, but an old room always know the corners. Now, many people will say, yeah, but you've got sat -nams now. Number one, for instance, I did a job this morning. I picked up the gentleman on a road called Auckland Road, SW11, Battersea. That gentleman was going to Grosvenor Street. All right. I came out of Auckland Road. I turned left onto Northcote Road and I forwarded onto St. John's Road, which only black cabs and buses can do. Now, no Satnam will show you that road. Mm -hmm. yeah. It will turn, turn right on the Madison Rice. So when people sit in the back of a black cab with your Satnams, oh, but shouldn't you have gone there? They forget a Satnam does not cater for the black cab. Not even the apps we have, free now, get, any of them do not cater for the black cab because it cannot recognize it, mm. okay? It does it like it's a car. Any driver out there who, who is on these apps, when it gives you a job, some of them, you can just do a U-turn and go to it. The app will show you to go around the block. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So most of the time when I'm driving, if I do a job on the app, I turn the app off while I'm driving. Because if I follow that, yeah, it will send me the way it will send the car. Yeah, 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 yeah. Okay? No app will show you to drive straight to Oxford Street from west to east. But we can. But we can. No app will show you to go through Hyde Park or Regis Park because these are royal parks. No business vehicles allowed. And with the knowledge, Courtney, yeah. do you still think People watching this mm. may be unemployed thinking, wow, I wonder if I, oh, there's still a, a job there. What would you say at the moment? Would you say to people, sign on the knowledge? Okay, all right. The knowledge numbers yeah. are awful. Okay, right? Right. yes, right. So here's a classic How do we example. regenerate interest I'll in tell you knowledge? How, we need new blood. Yeah, so I'll tell you how I get it going. When I had the school, as I said, because of how I grew up, when I was 20 years old, you couldn't come and tell me about the knowledge. Mm. You'd be lucky if you, you, you was able to come where I was. Mm. You know, I grew up sleeping with one eye open. Because I don't know whether the police were coming to raid us or not. <laughs> okay, right. Mm. So when I was that age, you couldn't even tell me what that was. 
So when I had the school, the fact that you can start with knowledge from 18 years old, anybody that came to me, I thought, how am I going to keep them interested? Because young people, if they haven't got any money or they can't pay, they lose interest. Mm -hmm. So my idea was, do not charge them. That's but it, yeah, but I made them pay me when they start working. Gotcha. Yeah. yeah, yeah. So we never signed any contracts. I left it to them, and every one of them came back and paid me when they started working. So anybody that came to me on the twenty-five, as I said before, black, white, male, female, Muslim, Christian, whatever, from they were under twenty-five, you came and you could study with me for nothing. But once you got your badge and you start working, you, can pay you come back and pay me. Do you think? Which is what I did. But she's on the I suffered for it. Yeah. Because it cost me with marriage everything. Yeah? But you know what? Having them on the street now, to me, is better than any pocket money. Yeah, yeah. Okay? Because the one thing I've realized. Whatever they have in their head and what they're doing now, I put it there. Well, I hope you enjoyed that interview as much as I did. And to be honest, it went on and on and on. I didn't want it to end, and nor did Courtney. So stay tuned and look out for part two of this fascinating interview with Courtney the Cabby. I think you're really, really going to enjoy it.